Hey guys, Sean Hammond with PremierGuitar.com here. We are backstage with Troy Van Leeuwen from Queens of the Stone Age. And uh, they're doing sound check with another band out there right now. So we're going to talk about Troy's rig here in the green room. Um, Troy, yes. thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. PG. PG, like there. PG. Is that good, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, you and Josh were off on a motorcycle ride just now. We want to talk about that a little bit first, okay. or should we just dive into the rig? We can talk about that because that's fresh on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we've we've got this trailer that we take with our you know with with our bus on the road in the states, and we put our bikes in there. So any town, especially like well, we're here in Council, Council Bluffs, Iowa. I guess that's where we are. Um, there's always some good riding. You know, there's always some open roads and and some breeze at your knees. So that was just a fun you know like hour and a half excursion that we took and you know when you're on the road there's a lot of things that you neglect because you're changing venues all the time you're going to different hotels so we need something like that to keep our brains you know active and also keep us away from <laughs> drinking too much and <laughs> and watching too much of the wire and and game of thrones you know <laughs> so so Blow off a little steam and get your mind yeah, clear before yeah, the yeah. So that's that's a good thing for us. What kind of rigs are we talking about in terms of bikes? Um, they're mostly Harley's. Um, you know, I know there's some people have stigmas about Harley's. I don't think I, I don't think I'm of myself as a Harley guy, but I like my Harley. Mm. You know, um, so what kind? I have a, a 2007 Springer Heritage Softail, and it's you know it's got some custom things on it kind of to my liking um, does it match does the paint match any of your guitars or anything just kidding no no i mean i mean black yeah, ox blood I, I got some i don't have any ox blood um on my bike but i certainly have black i don't know if you noticed but i don't really like black <laughs> at all all right so in terms of your guitar rig you've actually got like three sort of rigs one for regular six string stuff one for lap steel and one for keyboard stuff. Do you want to start off talking about your guitar rig? Yeah, well, basically my guitar rig is is years of accumulation <laughs> of stuff. Um, some of it's old, some of it's new, um, some of it's analog, some of it's digital. I, I don't really, you know, care too much for, you know, everything being vintage and all special and, and you know, precious. I, I like stuff that works. Um, you know, so I like a mix, you know, there's, there's, um, there's some, you know, some new pedals that I have and, um, there's, um, some new companies that I've discovered yeah. that are making pedals. Uh, I really like this company called Earthquaker Devices. Yeah. They're in, uh, um, I guess they're in Akron, Ohio. Ohio. Um, using a couple of their, their pedals, uh, I use the Dispatch Master. It's a nice reverb echo, um, and I also use the Bit Commander. And these are on your regular guitar rig? Yes. Now, those must be in the rack, I'm guessing, yeah. because on the pedal board on stage, we didn't see that. Yeah, because there's. I also use a ground control unit because I'm also running MIDI to change this the newest piece of gear I have, which is called a Fractal. Mm -hmm. so the um, XFX2? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and I'd been holding off forever to use something like that, but it's just kind of crept into my life because I've always used a, like a TC Electronics um, G-Force, yeah. and um, it, it started making noise after using it for 10 years. <laughs> so I just figured I'd, I'd get something new. And actually, I've gotten quite and quite used to the, uh, the Fractal. It, sound, it sounds great, actually, because once you get into the, all the parameters... Of all the effects, you can actually make it sound pretty, pretty good, pretty much custom. Now your on-stage amp rig is basically a couple of AC30s, right? I had driving, and I think it was like a 212 cab and a Marshall 412, and then another AC30 combo. Mm-hmm. They're both hand-wired uh, AC30s. Um, like the recent hand wired versions that you can buy, you just refinished them in red. Yeah, yeah they're just they're just Tolux and, and Bronco red because all of our amps are Tolux and Bronco red right now. <laughs> um, so there's there's those that I use those because they're new and I think I've had one go down on me 
um, in the last six years. So how do those work with the Axe Effects? Like, can you sort of break down what you use those for and what you use the Axe Effects for and how many sounds you use in the Axe Effects and stuff? I'm really using the Axe Effects for reverbs and tap delays. Um, and then I'll, I actually use it also for um, sort of like a, a, I guess it would be univibe, you know, okay. sort of wobbly mm -hmm. effect. But I also use it for routing stuff to different amps. Okay. Like I, my main amp with the, the 212 and the 412 is pretty dry. The and then the other... The AC30 yeah, head. AC30 head. And then the other combo has all the effects going to it. So sometimes I'll do a little bit of stereo stuff, and sometimes I'll just throw everything on that side. Just so all yeah, control out front, fr front of house, you know. Um, so all the amp sounds are from the AC30s. You're mainly using effects from the XFX. Yeah, I'm not really down with um, using, you know, digital amps yet. <laughs> <laughs> I would never say never, you know, but it just, just doesn't feel right to me. Um, but, yeah, that's why I'm using... For gain stages, I'm using pedals. You know, I use some way huge stuff. I've got a pork loin for like just a straight boost. Mm -hmm. And I'm using uh, this company called Fuzz Rocious that makes this great fuzz pedal called the OC Demon mm -hmm. that's hand wired too. And, and um, uh, is that one in your rack? That's in the rack too, yeah. Um, but yeah, what I have on the pedal board is kind of before all, all the rack. You know, so I'm using also this uh, Super Puss mm -hmm. uh, delay yeah. just for, you know, if I want to get nutty for a second, mm -hmm. it gets really extreme. Analog, yeah. Um, and yeah. the custom audio electronics tap tempo pedal that's on that main pedal board, is that for the Axe FX? That's for the Axe FX, yeah. It's just for the tap tempos of everything, yeah. So. How many different sounds are you using, or different... Uh, like the ground control from Voodoo Lab has a lot of buttons on it. Do you use that many I patches? Do, I or? use all of them. And I have like banks and banks of song presets. You know, like we started off with a set, like a general kind of set. So I made, you know, a bank for each song. So I'm using it all. Yeah. And I'm actually accessing the loops as well. The first eight loops, which are the pedals. Are the sounds radically different from like what you're doing for the new album, like Clockwork, yeah. versus the older stuff? That's kind of where the 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 evolution of you know sort of my role in the band has has gone. Yeah. So when I first joined the Queens, you know, Josh and I were kind of using the same sort of setup, which I'm not going to talk about because <laughs> that's that's his thing. And over the years, my role has sort of become like you know the single coil playing ambient color guy so that's why i don't just play guitar i play lap steel and yeah. i play keyboards too yeah that's why i went to the ac30s after using his stuff because it just branched out where his sound is the main sort of queen sound you know mm -hmm. and mine kind of flanks his his realm and then now that we have dean in the band too there's there's a lot of ground being covered, so you can't just live in that one general mid-range guitar yeah. world. We we go from high to more complementary. Yeah, yeah. So, but the AC30s can, with a certain pedal, they can do what the old the old stuff does. They're very versatile. You know, I use this Q Zone from Dunlop. It's basically a, a wah pedal that you just set and forget, and it makes perfect chicken every time. There's a Morley Wah too, yeah. It's just a straight up Wah. Yeah, I don't think there's a fuzz in there. The Dunlop volume pedal, right? Do you do a lot of swelling effects, or? Yeah, yeah. That's a pretty key uh, piece of gear in my rig. There's lots of times where it's just easier for me for me to hit it with my foot rather than my finger. As far as like you know, easing back. Um, there's some points in the set where we, you know pull the volume almost all the way down you know and keep playing and uh even our sound men out front will pull the faders down at some point you know just for for drama yeah. what's the lap steel it's it's this channeler lap steel it's just a giant hunk of mahogany and it's got this 
I think it's like an Invader pickup. <laughs> it's just the hottest. Like a Duncan? Yeah, like the hottest pickup you can find. Um, it's an unusual combo for a lap still. Yeah, it's not really like, you know, it's not really used in the traditional sense very much. It's it's a, it's a noisemaker, yeah. and it's a, a searing sort of swooping, you know, effect piece. You know, a lot of the times... There's a you know there's this there's a, ring, a reverb on it and there's a delay on it and uh, I'll use an Ebo on it even yeah. so. What else is on that pedal board? I think um, there was a Line Six DL4 delay modeler, yeah. right? Yeah, it's just easier to have that guy there because there's three different settings that I use for the delays, um, and it's I, I just use a um, I think it's a REV5 Boss reverb. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's my one of my new favorite pedals uh, that my friend Jonathan Hish turned me on to. Okay, uh, it's called the Super Ego. It's an elect- uh, electro harmonics pedal, and it's basically like a f- sort of a freeze portamento kind of thing that really, really helps make more noise. <laughs> um, and uh, there's a there's a Green Rhino by Way Huge just to boost it if I need to. On the DL4, are you doing any sort of looping type stuff, or mainly just straight delays? Yeah, it's pretty much straight delays. I, I think a, there's a there's an expression pedal just to you know tweak the feedback um, if I need to. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much that rig. I just use a regular slide because steel or it's Pyrex. Steel. Yeah, it's steel. Um, sometimes because there's there's one song on the new record called Colopsia where. I have to switch between lap steel and guitar slide guitar really quick, so I need I need to have it on my finger already. I used to use the big solid bars, mm-hmm. but yeah, that just it just won't work. So it works fine now. Now, what else is in your rack? I think you mentioned the Fuzzerocious and the uh, yeah. is that where the the Q the Q what? zone is in there. I think there's a Green Rhino in there too. My rig is constantly changing. I mean, right now it's it's working really really nice, but I know in like two months it's gonna there's gonna be some changes. It's just the way it is. I find new stuff and I find stuff that's that works better. And speaking of that, that's probably a good segue into your new, I think your newest guitar, yeah, the Echo there's, Park. There's there's the Echo Park. It's um, it's based off a design um, that Leo Fender, the, the main builder for Echo Park, Gabriel, used to work at GNL, I guess. Mm-hmm. So he discovered this guitar that Leo Fender left behind uh, in an attic, I guess. It's like a, you know, it's the shape of a telly, but it's kind of bigger. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it's handmade by Gabriel. It's, it's really cool. And it's got like a traditional T style bridge with, I think, brass barrels or something. Brass barrels on it, you know. Um, I've been, I've been using some of the mastery stuff too because I have a, I have another telly that has the mastery bridge on it, so I'm kind of toying with that. Um, Does that other telly have like a Bigsby on it to work with that or? No, no, they make a telly bridge now, mastery. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is really great. It's totally, it like, just stays, it keeps everything just, you know. That's another thing where it's like new technology. It's like sometimes people go, eh, you know, the purists. And I'm like, fuck all that. I, I like things that work and things that stay in tune. Yeah. And I'm on the road. I'll leave all my vintage stuff at the studio, you know, where it's in a nice environment where it's not going to get thrashed. Um, well, it could get thrashed. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, yeah, so I've been using the Mastery Bridge on that and on you know all my Jazz Masters, too. What are the pickups in the Echo Park before we go on to your new um, Jazz Masters? It's, I think it's modeled after a 60s Tele pickup. I'm not sure what year he said. You know, he's so great. He basically built that guitar and treated it in like two weeks, like in the most intense part of our pre-production to get ready to go on the road. So he would just show up at the at the show with and at the the day of the show it was ready and I couldn't even remember all the stuff that he did to it but it's it's such a great guitar and it feels good and sounds good. Um, in the neck pickup, I think there's um, it's a gold foil sort of 
Diarmond almost yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, but it's Arcanes are in some other guitars on the stage, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's those pickups. Yeah, they're go- they're he calls them the gold foil pickups, but it's a single coil and it's it it sounds kind of like a mid 60s japanese like taisko del rey you know I, I like that sound so did you have any special requests in terms of the neck or neck profile or the frets or anything i just really was going for like a a mid 60s kind of telly you know just something that's that's a little little bigger you know but just classic um um no no real frills there other than the pickups and the way it's built i mean it's built like a like a tank, you know. All right, so next up, I think what we saw earlier was, is it a new signature, Jazzmaster? Yeah. Well, here it is right <laughs> here. Um, this is the prototype of my new Jazzmaster. It's basically, it's modeled after a mid-60s, like 66, 65 Jazzmaster, but the only difference, and of course it's all sweaty, um, is instead of the plastic pickup selector here i I put a a full-on uh toggle switch because i learned how to play electric guitar on basically a les paul and so i use this circuit all the time just for either for pickup switching or to to, for for killing for killing faster than the little slider yeah just i always miss it you know live but i really wanted the aesthetic of a mid-60s jazz master with the matching headstock um, and the block inlays and the binding on the neck. Um, the pickups are uh, they're, they're new vintage American Jazzmaster pickups. Um, although it doesn't come with the mastery bridge, it comes with a Mustang bridge. The production model. model. Yeah, the production model because I wanted to do a deal with the mastery, but it they, he just couldn't make that many, <laughs> yeah. like more than 200, uh, you know. Um, you know when this will be coming out? I hope before the end of the year, but better be out by NAM. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's the only other thing that's custom, and it's sort of a tip of the hat to a candy apple. It's my candy oxblood sort of, you know, it's a, it's like a, I don't know what they consider, like when, you know, when you get an, like an old 50s car or like a 55 Bel Air or, or you know, a 49 Merc. Sometimes they'll paint it this color where it looks black in the dark and then in the light it's like a wine color, oxblood. So I wanted something like that that really accentuated the curves of the body. Um, and that's really it. I mean, it's it's pretty much a, a standard standard jazz master just with my couple of tweaks. Sweet. Now, I think Eric Yurtek mentioned the other main guitar on stage was a Burns 12-string. Yeah, on this new record, if you haven't noticed, there's a lot of 12-string on on the recordings. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was the guitar. And right now I'm actually working on a, on a 12-string Fender. Um, just because that one's really special to me. I've had it forever. And I've used the it. The Burns? Yeah, the Burns. And it's green. It's a green sunburst. Um, so I need a backup, you know. Um, what can you tell us about the new Fender you're working on? Well, there's actually two. Um, one's a double neck Jazzmaster. 12 on top, 6 on the bottom. It's Will that be just be a one-off it's thing? It's a one-off, yeah. I think it's, I mean, I don't, I don't know how many double necks <laughs> Fender could sell. <laughs> or me. Um, but, um, yeah, that's something that's going to be very useful for stage because on the record there's a lot of switching between 12 and 6 string and yeah just to have a backup would be great and then there there, there's also talk of maybe doing a telly 12 string just because like we posted on facebook before when we were on our way here telling people you know we're going to talk to troy what do you want us to ask and a lot of people were asking about your signature yamaha that used to have as a yeah. semi hollow body i think was it with uh p90s had three p90s in it yeah um and just wondering if that is just something that is doesn't work within the context of what you have to do for queens of the stone age or at the moment it it's better for you know for the new record to have more of a single coil like you know fender sound a little too much gristle on the p90s yeah i mean they're pretty hot and and for 
you know, when I designed that guitar with them, it was during the making of Lullabies to Paralyze, and we were using a lot of hollow bodies on that record, and a lot of old hollow bodies that we never wanted to bring on the road. So I wanted something that could, you know, do that live, you know, go from the middle pickup to, you know, to either other of the other pickups. So, and I, I love that guitar. They just stopped making it. And then, so they're gone. So find, if you can find one, I say, even if it's used, just grab it because I mean, that was a, that was a one-time deal. (laughs) So you just have a handful left or? I have a couple left, you know, I have one in the box and I think I have the prototype and a backup of that one. Another thing people were asking was just about how stuff differs from what you're using on the road versus in the studio. And you've said a lot of things so far that sort of indicate you're trying to replicate what's on the album. But what are some of the differences? Um, Amp wise, another amp that I've used for I don't know how long is a Fender Bass Man, a 60s, a 65. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll put that into any cabinet and it sounds great. So that's another amp that I used a lot on on the record. As far as pedals, I'm using just about everything that I used on the record. You know, um, guitar wise too. You know, this it's a lot of single coil stuff. Um, Tellys, um, Jazzmaster, Jaguar. Yeah, I think in your guitar boat on the side of the stage that we I did see a Telly and another Jazzmaster and maybe even a Les Paul and a couple other things. Are those just like if you're in the mood and you guys just had well, to do some encore song? Sometimes or? you know at the at the end of the set we you know do some older stuff and you know that's where the Les Paul comes out. It's a it's a you know the older stuff definitely has a, a humbucker sound. Um, so. The, yeah, the Les Paul is tuned down for that stuff. And actually, I, I'm using a Jazzmaster tuned down for some stuff too because, like I said, you know, we're kind of at that spot where we can branch out tone wise. Even if we're playing an older song, it's almost nice to cut through a little more, you know. A different timbre from a different tuning. Yeah, yeah. So I, that's, and that's another reason why I use those Mastery Bridges because they really hold that tuning on a Jazzmaster like perfectly are quite a few or some of the new songs in like C I think some of the guitars that Josh is using are in C like baritone tuning aren't they It's not really baritone it's it's a, it's like a basically if you take a regular tuning guitar um and drop it I don't know what is that two whole steps so it's just a regular tuning but yeah. just in C And then on those songs where Josh is using that do you also tune down or do you just sort of depends you know there i think there are some songs where you can do both you know somebody can hold down the low end and somebody can do the high end um you know now that we have three guitar players there's a lot of that going on it's kind of there's kind of no no rules now you know so whatever works you know don't don't trip on it too hard that's how we kind of roll all right so unless there's anything else in the main rig what how can go on you know i could (laughs) How about talk about my shoes? I mean, I wear these kind of shoes because I step on a lot of pedals. Easier to get into the specific foot switch. It's a very yeah, it's a very surgical procedure that I'm working on. Those look deadly too. There's they're, steel toes in there, huh? Do some damage. <laughs> Is that blood on one? No, just kidding. That that could be. <laughs> you too. Ox, ox blood, blood on, your, on your shoes. What uh, strings, what gauges do you prefer, and brands if you have any? Um, I'm I'm. Not that much of a stickler for strings. I think strings are strings unless you're in the studio. Live, I use the Dunlops. Um, you know, I have a good relationship with that company and that, um, and they've been really good to me. And so I just keep on keep on using them. They're like tens or elevens. They're or eleven to fifty twos for E. I, th- I think the C's are twelve to fifty eight or something like that. Cool. Um, yeah. About picks. Herco's. Through Dunlop, yeah, seventy five, like seventy five millimeter. Okay. Jimmy Page pick. That's that's what I was told. Sweet. What about as far as like tubes in your AC thirties? Are you picky about brand? Are they new old stock or just like current no, groove there's, tubes? There's kind of a little bit of both. Um, there's some groove tubes in there. Um, I've you know I like I like their stuff. Um, 
it's basically I don't think I've changed the tubes in years. I mean, that's why I like those amps. I, they just don't. Pretty much what came in them? Pretty much what came in them, yeah. I mean, they're stock. I, there's no hot rodding going on on my, on my amps. They just work, you know. Well, Troy, we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. Yeah. Um, where can people go to find out more about what you're doing and more of what's coming out? I with would, Queens of the Stone Age and your new guitars and stuff? I would say that, you know, the newest thing that I'm going to be doing is, is the Fender uh, signature model and the double neck. So anything, you know, I'll try and like, you know, Instagram a picture or whatever, or maybe, you know, Twitter it. But yeah, the progress of that is being documented to the double neck. Mm -hmm. So I'm that's on your uh, Twitter account. No, it's going to be done through Fender and I'll just kind of you know, link it up. Um, but yeah, I'll, I just keep looking for new stuff. And so, you know, I'll always kind of Instagram or Twitter it. Okay. Yeah. Any Facebook stuff you want to plug or websites you want people to? No, I mean, there's, you know, the other band that I work with, Sweethead, um, we're almost done with our new record and look out for that. Uh, that's going to be coming out hopefully before the end of the year. Cool. Thanks, man. Sure. This is Sean Hammond for PremierGuitar.com. Thanks for watching.